The other side's got a lot of crazy endorsements. Swift, Eminem, Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce. Every day the Democratic Party looks more and more like a P. Diddy party. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what you guys want. All right, in my opinion, that was the best joke of the Tony Hinchcliffe, Madison Square Garden, Trump rally set controversy, whatever you want to call it. Everywhere I'm looking around on the Internet, everybody's talking about the Puerto Rico joke and calling it racist, calling it the craziest, most horrible thing ever. And I think the whole set was good, but in my opinion, that P. Diddy joke, that line was the best part right there. I like how he paused as the whole crowd starts groaning and uh, before he delivered the punchline. So I think he did a great job, but we're going to recap it here, take a look back. What do you guys think? Is this going to hurt Trump's campaign, help it? Did this make things worse or better? What do you think? What kind of crazy world are we living in where Republicans are having, you know, the, the best the best roast comics come up and perform at at their convention or at their rally? This is just insane. You never would have saw this back in the day. I cannot believe Republicans are the ones having the cool comedians roasting at their rallies. So whether you like it or not, I'm here for the comedy. I'm here to watch the Tony Hinchcliffe controversy. Everybody's all upset. They cannot believe that he said it. But just remember, people, it's jokes. I I didn't realize jokes are racist, but I guess everything is in today's society. So we're going to take a look back here, run through from the beginning, watch the set, break it down, and kind of discuss if this is going to hurt or help uh, Trump, I guess. Here's from the top. Wow, isn't this special? 17 years ago, I was sleeping in my car behind the comedy store in L.A., and I'm proud to say this is my fourth time performing at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the damn world. The American dream alive and well right here. This is very different than where I'm used to performing, though. I'm used to nighttime with people drinking, not so many babies in the crowd, and people that are obviously only here for Lee Greenwood tonight. <laughs> Normally, I don't make my political beliefs a known thing. It's divisive for a comedian to do that, but just know I sleep well at night knowing who I'm voting for. Yeah. Yeah. When I lay down and my head hits my my pillow, It is a fantastic pillow, by the way. I was staying at the Four Seasons up by Central Park one night, and I laid my head down, and it felt so good. And I thought to myself, what an amazing pillow. I have a little bit of money now. I could buy a good pillow. And I took the pillowcase off, and there it was. My pillow, my pillow, my pillow. And damn it, I bought four of them. And if you use the promo code KILLTONY, you can also buy for my pillows. There's serious stuff happening, people. I, uh, I live in the great state of Texas now. Uh, 18 years in Ohio, 20 years in California, and I got to see California turn to absolute uh, horrendous, horrendous thing. And traveling the world, I got to see San Francisco turn into one of the most demented cities, one of the greatest downfalls I've ever seen. And that is where the other candidate uh, worked for two decades. And it's absolutely wild to see. And in Texas... So it's great how, you know, he's doing a, a comedy set and he does a great job and everything, but he also, you can tell the points when he gets serious. And he's pointing out right there that Kamala Harris, you know, obviously worked in San Francisco as a prosecutor was part of the downfall of the great city, and you can tell he's sincere right there. This stuff is really, really crazy. We're right there by a wide open border. Where are my proud Latinos at tonight? You guys see what I mean? It's wide open. There's so many of them. It's absolutely incredible. Believe it or not, people, I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> it's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies, too. Just know that. They do. They do. 
There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside, just like they did to our country. <laughs> Republicans are the party with a good sense of humor. Free speech is under attack, people. I host a show, and each week I get updates what words we're allowed to use and not use anymore. It's happening right now the past few years. It's a real thing. And, uh, you know, you used to be able to tell people to Google stuff. My mom's a boomer in the state of Ohio, and uh, there's no convincing her of anything. She's eating the cats. She's eating the dogs. They're eating the pets up there. It is absolutely wild times. It really, really is. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. And there it is, the controversial okay. joke. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. We're Racist getting there. jokes. Again, normally I don't follow the national anthem, everybody. Uh is isn't exactly a perfect comedy setup. There's some people here. All right. Very good. Racist I like jokes. It. I have other policies that I think it should be implemented as well. Like me personally, I think football should be all year round. Yeah. So many great athletes. I don't know about you guys, but I think that Travis Kelsey might be the next OJ Simpson. That's a good joke, too. That's probably my second favorite joke right there. Feels good in here. The other side's got a lot of crazy endorsements. Swift, Eminem, Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce. Every day the Democratic Party looks more and more like a P. Diddy party. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what you guys want. All right. Heck yeah, this cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that, a lampshade? Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding, that's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun, we carved watermelons together. It was awesome. <laughs> you guys are, this is a groany little morning crowd, huh? It's tough to follow this uh, audition for the next Commissioner Gordon's over here. It is, though. It's crazy times we're living in. I mean, all these pointless wars. It is unbelievable what's happening right now. It is incredible. Ukraine versus Russia, Israel, it's like bad soccer games. Who even cares? What are we doing? Why is our money involved in these wars? Right, right. When it comes to Israel and Palestine, we're all thinking the same thing. Settle your stuff already. Best out of three. Rock, paper, scissors. You know the Palestinians are going to throw rock every time. But you also know the Jews have a hard time throwing that paper. You know what I'm saying? All right, we're having fun now. We're cooking. Hillary Clinton said that this is a Nazi rally here today. Can you believe that? For the most anti-war president of my entire lifetime, and she calls him Hitler. Let me remind you, Hillary, it was your husband who shot innocent people, or as he called them, interns. Yeah, Hillary, I bet you did not see that one coming. <laughs> That's the other really crazy part right there, this whole thing. By the way, if I commit suicide in three weeks, I didn't. <laughs> if I commit suicide in three weeks, I didn't. And the, the not see that coming Hillary joke, that was great. But also there's a point in there where you can tell he gets sincere again because they're calling it a Nazi rally for the most, you know, peaceful non-war president of our lifetime. So he's being sincere again there. Um, I will point out that, you know, Trump did drop a lot of a drone, do a lot of drone strikes and drone bombings. So it's debatable if he was really the, you know, the most peaceful president of our lifetime. But people say that because he didn't initiate any new wars. 
So there is an argument to be made there, and that's what he's referring to. <laughs> I mean, it's just obvious to me who the right candidate is. There's a guy out here dodging bullets. It is unbelievable, right? Allegedly. He took it right in the ear. Unbelievable. I thought about this. I don't know if you have. Coolest place to get shot. Like, if you're gonna get shot anywhere, on your body, that's where you want it. Right there. Technically, he got shot in the head, depending on if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Right? If you're a Democrat, his ear was grazed. If you're a Republican, he survived a headshot. It is. It's the best place to get shot. It's the only part of the human body will drive a piercing through like a little girl's ear for no reason. Right? There's just no... It heals fast. Nobody cares. It's the best place to get shot. He went down, saw blood on his hands. I'd imagine he thought right then, I think I just won this shit. <laughs> stands up and says the most American words I've ever heard in my life. No, 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 no. Before that, there was one more. Let me get my shoes. <laughs> Fearless. Perhaps still with an active shooter, he's talking like a guy that just had the best one night stand of his life. Right? Like, where's my shoes at? I gotta get the hell out of here. I thought, what is my let me get my shoes. And then the fight, fight, fight. What he did was so cool that Biden got COVID. Oh, yeah. Go back. Look at the timeline of everything again. Three days after that. That means that Biden, he didn't get that from hanging out with sick people. He was in a sterile room in the White House watching blood running down Trump's face as he pumps his fist. Biden's like... Oh, fuck. Oh, God, no. It's true. Trump survived an assassination attempt, and Biden got COVID. We vote next week. God voted three months ago. Jeez. That crowd's going to love that line. Another great Austin, Texas resident, Elon Musk, will be speaking here later today. Unbelievable. Genius. You guys saw him shoot that rocket into outer space, the largest aircraft ever. Fires it off into space and then parallel parks it back to planet Earth. Meanwhile, Kamala supporters can't parallel park their Toyota Priuses properly. Sorry, I listen to Elon Musk. I follow his lead. The world's smartest, richest man has my attention. Except for when it comes to stock trading, then I listen to Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Another great line. But censorship is amongst us people. It's a very, very, very big deal. And uh, I'm just here to say that uh, you guys are for the right candidate. Tell your friends. Let's close it out. And uh, let's make speech free again. Make America healthy again. Let's beat the team from California. The team from New York should beat the team from California. Not only in this election, but in the World Series of Baseball, America's sport. I love you, New York. God bless New York. God bless America. Let's make it great again. Yeah, you can tell he's kind of free-balling it at the end, just kind of winging it there. And um, Yeah, I like the ending. You can also tell he got a little more sincere again right there. Um, did the, the shout-out to the Make America Healthy Again, Make, uh, make Speech Free Again. So, yeah, I think overall he did a great job. I mean, there was some some controversial stuff in there, but he's a roast comic, so what do you expect? It's very shocking that they would allow him to do this at a Trump rally like this, at any political event, really. It's not the, the place for it, really, but I, I like it. 
It's uh, people are split. Do you guys think that it's going to help or hurt Trump? Do you care? What's up with it? Let me know in the comments below. Is it going to help or hurt? What do you think? I think I could see both sides of it. It's very inappropriate to have at a political rally or whatever, but I personally like it. He's going to win over all the young crowd. He's they're they're embracing the anti woke, anti cancel culture fully. So anybody who's against that stuff is going to love this. So I think I think that's why it's going to work in their favor in the long run. Potentially is because they're completely embracing the anti cancel culture aspect of society by having the uh, the great Tony Hinchcliffe here come here and roast everybody. I mean he he made fun of everybody. He made fun fun of his own mom even for eating the pets. So I think it's uh, it was risky, but I think it's <laughs> it's really funny. And I think it's going to probably play out in their favor, uh, showing, you know, that they're, they're trying to be the cool ones, whether you, you want to admit it or not, or whether you think it's true or not. I mean, it's up for debate, but they're trying to at least embrace this kind of, uh, you know, comedic subculture that goes against all of the woke craziness and cancel culture out there. So I think in that way, I think it might be in their favor let me know what do you think is uh this tony hinchcliffe roast appropriate is it going to help or hurt was it funny i think it was funny i think it was uh there was a lot of good lines in there but who knows who knows what's going to happen i i mean on, on the other side of this you can also look and just see it's kind of like idiocracy i mean i cannot believe all of these celebrities coming out and endorsing both sides everybody getting all riled up it's going to be an interesting uh, election, of course, and we'll see what happens. But uh, this was funny. You cannot deny it was funny. And if you like comedy, if you like free speech, if you're against cancel culture and, uh, you know, all the woke craziness going on out there, I would imagine that you would like this. But let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Thanks for checking out the channel. I do current event wraps and reactions, and uh, I'll check you out next time. Have a good rest of your night and be safe, everybody.